Good morning, comic book fans. Welcome back to Comics in Five Minutes. I'm Revolver Host Shitty. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Alice Ever After. And for the people on YouTube, there's been a description thing. For TikTok, I've got to remember to add it on when I put this up. But there's a content warning for this one. In case people haven't read it, I'm going to make it perfectly clear up front in case anything I'm going to talk about is going to cause an issue. We are going to be talking about drug use and addiction. And there is going to be a small bit of conversation about child abuse. These are part of the story. I'm not doing this because I just want to talk about them. They are legitimately things that happen in this comic book, or at least things that could potentially be happening in this comic book. And to discuss it authentically, they're going to be brought up. So even if it's a minor little thing I'm talking about or a little bit that's going to bug you, if it's going to cause any problems, please thank you for watching. But I totally take no offense if you step away from this review and go and find somebody else talking about this comic book. I have no argument with you at all there. You do what's best for you. Look after yourselves. Right. Anyway. So Alice Ever After is another comic book or another story about Alice in Wonderland or Alice in the Looking Glass. Um, and I generally avoid these kind of things. Me and my friends have occasional discussions about this where it's like, oh, somebody else is doing another story about Alice in Wonderland. I wonder if this one's going to be about a young girl and her burgeoning into womanhood. Oh, we should reply, we should be, ah, no, you never. It might be about drug use. And that kind of begins and ends the conversations we have about it because it feels like pretty much every what time somebody takes another swing at this story, it's going to fall into one of those two camps. And I kind of I'm done with it. Um, look at I think Xenoscope Entertainment does like a few comic books with this kind of thing. I do a lot of the Grim uh, fairy, uh, fairy Tales kind of, kind of stuff as well. And I just I don't care enough. Um, there's one reason the way I picked this one up. One reason alone. That name at the top there, uh, Dan Panosian. He is a really good writer. He did the uh, you know, Kindness of Ravens, which was a real cool um, teen high school witch thing and. I don't know why, but that is exactly in my wheelhouse. That's totally the kind of thing I'm into, and I totally enjoy reading it. So when I saw his name on it, I thought, yeah, you know what? I'm going to give this a shot. Um, and I'm, I'm glad I did, because not only is it a cool story, it looks great as well. There's two different artists in this one involving Dan Panosian himself, um, and I think he's the one doing the Wonderland artwork, uh, where you actually get to see the things that Alice is experiencing. Trying to find a way to put it which doesn't come across offensive to, to drug users. Um, but it, it d does have this sense of another world, and to do that, they have completely changed the art style, and it's effective. But the art style throughout is effective. It is quite crisp and quite clean when it needs to be. Um, there's a certain like dirtiness to it when it's necessary, because you are dealing with the um, Victorian era London, um, and the things there are quite nasty. Um, but the artwork isn't really what I want to talk about. As good as it is, it is not the reason why this comic book is interesting. Uh, first off, for the drug use kind of stuff, yes, we're going to talk about that right now. They are not shying away from that. At no point is this like an uh, an analogy for drug use. This is literally a woman dealing with addiction issues. Um, she uh, befriends and potentially becomes romantically involved with very dangerous, very unsavory people, so she can carry on gaining access to her narcotic of choice. Uh, now, weirdly, in this era and this time and place, um, getting hold of such narcotics really wasn't like a huge issue. If we can read between the lines and see what she's actually taking, uh, you could literally go to a chemist and buy it. Uh, but they phrase it quite nicely in the fact that Alice's family, her father is a dentist, um, and it would look bad for his daughter to be seen going in and buying this kind of thing over and over again, clearly for her own use. So he's basically spoken to pretty much all the reputable dealers for it and said, please don't sell my daughter anything. Um, speaking of the father, we're now going to get to the other unsavory part of this conversation. Because she has two sisters, does Alice, and they have a conversation with their father at some point about the fact that Alice does seem to have a major problem with this kind of medication. They make note of the fact that when they were children, they were all given the same kind of medication, but it always felt like Alice had to be given more. And she was constantly given more of this medication by her father. The father then looks very shifty. Now, this could be nothing. This could just be him realizing maybe he made a mistake uh, by over-medicating his daughter, and his guilt from that is just going to be part of his life from here on out. But I GM a couple of European games set in Victor uh, a neo-Victorian London, and they're horror games, but ostensibly most of the things that go bump in the night for my games are people doing terrible things to people. So when I saw that, I was thinking to myself, if I was going to put in some kind of really nasty story about a father doing terrible things to his children... That's the kind of beat I would take. Now, I don't know if this is the case. As I say, this is literally just one panel with a few speech bubbles. But 
it does hint enough that this is going to be a reason for her um, self-medicating, uh, why she is an addict and why she goes to such lengths and why she's also quite willing to spend time, again, kind of romantically with somebody who clearly is taking advantage of her in many ways, not just sending her out to steal for him. Very dark subject matter. It is lightened slightly by the fairly common trope when people are going to do stories of Alice, which is in the real world there are analogues of the characters she encounters in Wonderland. This happens at least three or four times in the comic book, um, her dealer being one of them, uh, always worried about being late. Um, the two people come to take her to a sanitarium, are big, large, bulky men, they don't say much, um, but when she voluntarily sends herself to a hospital for the unwell, uh, clearly the Queen of Hearts is there waiting for her. Um, this is one of those things that I kind of can't criticise Yes, it is a trope. Yes, it is kind of been done to death, but it's also it's part of the mythology of the character. It's exactly how the stories work, and putting them in there, at least I think they're done inventively. It's not just lazy storytelling, and it works really quite nicely. Um, overall, I enjoyed it, uh, but I think because I kind of went in expecting just to get another version of an Alice story which's going to fall into a couple of camps, I wasn't taken too far out of that comfort zone, and I'd have preferred it if I was. Don't get me wrong... It did go in a different direction than I was 100% expecting. And I want to see what happens carrying on from it, because I think there's some nice twists and hooks left in there to unravel. But it's a darker story than I was expecting, and I think that might put some people off. Anyway, that's it for me today. There's still like three things I could review, so keep an eye out. I might squeeze one in tomorrow. If not, I'll be back next week. Until then, look after each other, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.